Hello and welcome to the Plymouth Coliseum. On behalf of Gladiators TV, my name is Gareth Bemister, your host and your commentator for this evening's match. It's a BSN Southern Series match. It's the Plymouth Gladiators and they are hosting the Oxford Cheaters this evening. A very interesting match is in stall. We are looking forward to seeing the Cheaters, of course, returning to the sport last year. So pleased to see the Cheaters back once again for 2023. They've already lost against the Paul Pirates in this tournament earlier in the season, so they are up against it. They will be desperate for a victory this evening here at the Coliseum. However, this is the first time that the Gladiators have come together and they will want to show what metal they have got for the rest of the season. So, we are going to go down and have some interviews and we have got a brilliant night's racing in store. We are very much looking forward to it. The weather has been kind to us all day and it's just about holding off now as well. So we're looking forward to a fantastic night's racing. So we've caught up with uh, Ben Barker. Once again, you must be really looking forward to getting going for the season. Yeah, it's going to be a good night. It's a uh, tough opposition, but glad to be back. Yeah, the Cheetahs, obviously, they've had a tough uh, start with the BSN series, having lost, and uh, probably will be really up for it tonight, I thought. Yeah, they're just lucky they've had meetings, to be fair. But no, no they've had a tough start, so they, it's a win or lose for them. You know, they don't win, they're out. So it's uh, do or die, really. Yeah, you've probably been in this position, what you've touched on there before, that uh, they've obviously had meetings, the Gladiators haven't. How much do you think that'll impact the Gladiators this evening? Luckily, a lot of our boys have been riding in the top league, which and Ben's been riding in the bottom league, so that's good. Um, so hopefully we've just got to get rolling and get up to speed as quick as possible, the boys who haven't been riding. And we've had the meeting, the one meeting, of course, the Paul Stark testimonial. How did you find the, uh, the meeting? Yeah, it was good. It was nice to be back on a bike, nice to be back around Plymouth. Just, uh, an engine blow up which is a shame but at least it happened then not tonight yeah and uh, th thoughts on the team this year obviously it's a strong looking five as well obviously the two reserves are a little bit of a is it, unknown yeah exactly what i was going to say they're an unknown it's a great top five unknown reserves but being unknown we don't know what's going to happen so we just keep we get get behind ben little ben you know and we don't need him to score many points we just want him to learn this year and if we can get jake to win eat two then if he wins eat two that's his job done yeah, and he's obviously been, uh, he's quite experienced, I think, Jake, isn't he? I don't know a lot about him. Yeah, myself. he's done a lot, a lot in New Zealand and places like that, so that's good. And he's been riding all winter, so he's race fresh. Perfect. Well, Ben, we'll let you get back to the pits. Uh, good luck for tonight and good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, thanks, guys. Cheers. So we've uh, got Scott Nichols with us now from an Oxford Cheetahs perspective. Scott, obviously, uh, season started uh, with Paul and uh, not as well as you'd hoped, but uh, quick to uh, come here tonight and make amends. Yeah, it definitely didn't go the way we planned it, but you know, Paul were always strong. Uh, they were just a better team, simple over the two legs. So, uh, yeah, we come in tonight. Obviously, it's you know the second place is important, so we kind of have to rule Paul out of it, and uh, it's important for us to to come here, get a decent result tonight, and obviously then do the business at the return leg. We've uh, obviously had you here last year with Oxford Cheetahs as well, and uh, great to have the Cheetahs back uh, more than anything. But uh, uh, last season, of course, the track's so much different to anywhere else. I mean, how do you feel that the boys are going to handle the different track conditions at the Coliseum? Yeah, it's pretty unique, but we've all been here a few times, and uh, it's early in the season, so hopefully if there's a time for us to try and catch a Gladiators off guard, it's going to be now because they've, they've not had an awful lot of track time. But look, it's a tight technical track. Starting is always really important here, but it's important to work as a team, keep your heads up and, and do the best we can. So, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a special track, but it's the same for everybody. Yeah, same, and uh, obviously the Cheetahs are fairly strong-looking side this year as well. You must be pleased to have a look alongside your team, and, and you've got a pretty strong, solid-looking side. Yeah, definitely. We've, uh, you know, they made a lot of change over the winter. Um, pretty much only kept me and Cam from last year. Um, got the, the league's number one at number one. Don't get much stronger than that. So, uh, no, it's a good looking team. But uh, what's on paper and what happens on the track can always be two different stories. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, from your own perspective, obviously drafted into the Wolves. And uh, obviously that's another story in itself. But uh, yeah, enjoying back up in the, the Wolverhampton colours. Yeah, just doing a few. Um, I don't want to do a full season in the league. I've got you know plenty on my plate and other commitments. So uh, yeah, the opportunity came along. Sadly, Luke through injury, and hopefully he's back on track again soon. But uh, while he's out, then I'll grab a few extra, a little bit of overtime, should I say? <laughs> well, good luck tonight, Scott. Great to have you back at the Coliseum. I uh, hope all goes well for you. Thank you. So we have got, uh, in blue on the inside, we've got Dan Jilks for the Gladiators. In yellow, in gate two, we've got Cameron Heaps for the Cheetahs. For the Gladiators in red, we've got the captain, Carl Howarth, and off the outside here in white will be Sam Masters for the Cheetahs. And that outside gate, gate four, was very, very strong for Paul Stark's testimonial the other week. So looking for the same here from uh, Sam Masters. So here we go then, sponsored by Prowl Park. Heat number one is at the tapes. 
and the tapes go up, away they go, it's an even start, a problem for Sam Masters going off the line, but it is straight into the front, it's Carl Howarth, he is chased by Cameron Heaps in that second, and all over the back of him at the moment is the rider in blue, Dan Jilks, they are all together, good start from Carl Howarth though. Yeah, I don't know if Sam Masters would seem to be complaining about something as he left the gate there, he waved his arm in the air, whether he didn't think the tapes went up evenly, but he had a dreadful gate because of it, and he's training in third place, and uh, Carl Howarth is pulling away at the front, he's got a good gap over Cameron Heaps, and Dan Jilks is putting pressure on Sam Masters for that third place at the back. Jilks is working very hard in that fourth place. He's going wide now into the dirt. He's going to try and find a way around the outside of Sam Masters going into bends three and four, but it looks like it's sewn up as a three-all. A good win from Kyle Howarth in this opening ride. Second place there to Cameron Heaps. And, uh, so it is a win and three points to Kyle Howarth in red. Two points there to Sam, uh, Cameron Heaps in yellow. Sam Masters picks up one point there in white and no score for Dan Jilks. Working hard at the back but he ends up pointless in this opening ride. And into the line they come. So we will have this time in white, off the inside is Henry Atkins for the Cheetahs. In red, off of gate two is Jake Turner for the Gladiators. For the Cheetahs in yellow is Luke Colleen and off the outside this time will be Ben Trigger in blue. So Luke Colleen has had some very exciting rides down here, of course, but we have got four up-and-coming reserves here, of course. Four young riders, four riders fairly new into their careers. Yeah, this should be really interesting, this uh, reserves race. As I said, Henry Atkins will be keen to show himself here and be interesting to see how Jake Turner gets on. So here we go then with heat number two, and Ben Triggers touched the tapes. That's a disaster out on the outside. He'll be absolutely gutted with that. So Start Marshall uh, bringing them back into line, ready for this one. So tapes rise on heat number two, away they go, and Henry Atkins has got lots of space on the inside. It is Henry Atkins that leads, but he's got round the outside Jake Turner. Jake Turner goes round the outside into Ben 3, and it is Jake Turner that's got a narrow lead. Henry Atkins is very hard on him coming down that straight. That's a lovely move by Jake Turner there. Obviously putting his testimonial problems behind him, but then it was a great retake by Henry Atkins showing his knowledge of the track, but that's very encouraging the way Turner tackled that first lap, and uh, he's looking very smooth at the moment in second place, trying to hold off the attentions of Luke Colleen, who's in third with uh, Ben Tricker, obviously on that handicap at the back. So it's looking like a 4-2 to the Oxford Cheetahs at the moment. A great ride early on from Henry Atkins. Doing what he needs to do there in that second place, Jake Turner. Very promising ride from him. Good win, though, from Henry Atkins in white. Jake Turner in red finishes second. Third place there to Luke Colleen in yellow. And Ben Trigger not able to make up that deficit at the beginning. So, the results, it was a win in white for Henry Atkins. And he gets lots of cheers on the back straight. Three points to him. Two points to the rider in red, Jake Turner. One point to the rider in yellow, Luke Colleen. No score to... The rider in blue, Ben Trigger, it's a 4-2 to the Cheetahs, which leaves us at 7-5. So off the inside in blue, we have got Ben Barker this time. Off of gate two in white, we have got Scotty Nichols. Off of gate three in red is Paul Stark, and off the outside is Jordan Jenkins in yellow for the Cheetahs. Yeah, so here we go, freshly watered on that inside line. So we will wait and see what happens from Ben Barker's perspective on the inside. So tapes up, away they go, it's a good getaway from Scott Nichols. it is Scott Nichols that leads into that first turn, he goes completely sideways in the middle of the turn, the two gladiators are packing that second and third, it's Scott Nichols who leads, but at the back now, Ben Barker's under tremendous pressure for his third place. Yeah, Nichols made a tremendous gate there, so I think the gladiators almost have to concentrate on protecting their second and third here from Jordan Jenkins who's getting close to Paul Stark at the back, but Scott Nichols is in brilliant form at the moment, and he's building up a bit of a gap between himself and Ben Barker. A couple of maximums already this season from a man who turns 45 next month. He is riding very, very well here, and the uh, Gladiators have got no answer to Scott Nichols at all. He is looking very, very fast up front. He's coming around Ben's three and four, and he's gonna take the win here in heat number three, a comfortable victory for Scott Nichols in heat three. Coming home in second there is Ben Barker, ahead of, in red, Paul Stark. So three points there to the rider in white, Scott Nichols. 
Two points to Ben Barker in blue. One point to Paul Stark in red. No score there for Jordan Jenkins in yellow, but a dominant performance from the veteran. So Ben Trigger this time is off the inside in blue, so he will want to make advantage of that inside gate. In yellow, off of gate two will be Luke Colleen for the Cheetahs. In red, off of gate three will be Richie Worrell for the Gladiators, and for the Cheetahs on the outside is the aforementioned Louis Kerr. Yeah, Kerr in that outside gate with uh, Richie Worrell just inside him. Richie Worrell has obviously got some very comfortable footwear tonight. It was airing on the roof alongside us before the meeting and uh, <laughs> just uh, get it all uh, spot on and ready for himself as he uh, takes his first ride of the meeting. So they come to the tapes for this heat number four. So tapes up, away they go. Richie Worrell makes a tremendous start up at gate three. He is followed by Louis Kerr, who's trying to go around the outside. He gets close on the back straight. With Richie Worrell's just about in front. Pulling off at the back is Luke Colleen, but it is Richie Worrell who controls the race. Yeah, great, great race awareness there from Richie Worrell. Louis Kerr trying to overtake him on the back straight, and Worrell just moved out across his line a little bit to block that move. And he's now got a, a one or two bite length lead on the, uh, as I said, the guy who won the championship pairs last year. But Kerr is putting him under a lot of pressure here going into the third and fourth bends. Worrell keeps to a tight inside line as they cross into the final lap. Louis Kerr looks very, very quick in that second place. He's now going back around the outside. Richie Worrell's looked over. He's going quick and wide into that turn. Richie Worrell's got to keep him out there. He locks it up. Just about clinging on is Richie Worrell. A great ride there from Richie Worrell. A good effort from Louis Kerr. Ben Trigger wasn't too far away either in third. So Heat 4 sees a win in red for Richie Worrell for the Plymouth Gladiators. Second place in white is Lewis Kerr for the Cheetahs. Third place in blue, Ben Trigger for the Gladiators. And no finish this time for Luke Colleen, who seemed to have bike problems at the start of that race. The Heat 5 sponsored by the Bates family. So we have got off of gate one here, we've got Cameron Heaps in yellow. And he's already in line. And we've got Sam Masters in white. We should have in uh, blue... Uh, in gate four, Ben Barker, and gate two will be Paul Stark, but they've got less than one minute to get themselves onto the circuit, and uh, here now comes Ben Barker. He'll be going off of uh, gate number four. So now we've got all four riders at the tapes. We have got in yellow, we've got Cameron Heaps. We have got Bar uh, we've got Stark in red. We've got in white, Sam Masters, and Ben Barker off the outside in blue. So here we go then with heat number five. Tapes go up, away they go. Barker's made a good jump from the outside, but he's forced wide. It is the two cheaters that lead. Barker's going back past, right round the outside of Cameron Heaps there, down the back straight. And now Barker's setting after Sam Masters as well. This is an inspired ride by Ben Barker. Much better gate there from Sam Masters, but he's got Barker all over him like a rat going down that back straight. Cameron Heaps just holding on to third, Paul Stark. A little adrift at the back, but Barker's going to keep the pressure on all the way on Masters. Masters going a touch wide on that second bend, but uh, he's stretching that gap now over Barker, who's got to keep eyes in the back of his head because Heaps is closing on him. Heaps is looking much quicker as they get to the late part of this race. Sam Masters is absolutely gone at the back, but Barker has got Cameron Heaps all over the back of him as they go into the last part of this race. Sam Masters picked up the win. Ben Barker does cling on to that second place ahead of Cameron Heaps in that third. And it is Paul Stark at the back. So three points there for the rider in white, Sam Masters for the Cheetahs. Two points to Ben Barker in blue. One point to the rider in yellow, Cameron Heaps. No score there for the rider in red, Paul Stark. Heat six then, sponsored by Cat Down Wharf. And uh, yeah, as you say, another interesting one here with several riders in good form at the moment. Henry Atkins, of course, will be buoyed by that first heat win here. and. Uh, he comes off the outside. He's not onto the circuit quite yet, but we have got the other riders. We've got in red on gate one, Kyle Howarth. We have got in white, gate two, Louis Kerr. We have got Dan Jilks in gate three in blue. And then we are just waiting for Henry Atkins in yellow to come onto the circuit. I can see he's being pushed on now. Yeah, so the start marshal calling them in. He is ready to get going. Still dry at the moment here. So, tapes up on heat six, away we go. It's an absolute flyer from Louis Kerr. It is him at least, but the red lights have come on. So, perhaps a little bit too fast for Louis Kerr. Louis Kerr takes it like a man. <laughs> he sees the sign and 
gives a knowing nod. I think he knew that he'd uh, perhaps uh, anticipated the start there rather quickly. He made it into the corner, and I thought he'd uh, thought he'd made an absolute flyer, but it turns out he had uh, gone a little bit too soon. Can he do something about that this time? Here we go then, and it's a much more even start. It is the two gladiators this time. Dan Jilks has fallen going into this first turn. It got very tight going into this first turn. There's no sign at the moment of a yellow flag. Now we've got the red flags out as the riders come round here. I think that the uh, I think that they were waiting to see if Dan was going to clear the track there. Well, from our angle, you could clearly see that that Kerr has taken away the uh, the wheel of Dan Jilks, but the fact that well, I was about to say the fact that the referee wasn't going to put the red lights on suggested that he was going to exclude Jilks. And, well, I think Dan Jilks has got every reason to feel aggrieved over that decision. Yeah, absolute controversy here. And Dan won't be very happy with that either. We turn our attention back to heat number six as the riders come to tapes. Lewis Kerr, this has had a... This is the third start now for this race in this heat six. So let's see if we can get going this time. Tapes up, away they go. And it is Lewis Kerr once again that leads into that turn. Up the inside is Carl Howarth. He's under attack though from Henry Atkins on the outside. So Lewis Kerr slots into that lead. He's looking comfortable, but he has got up the inside of him, Carl Howarth. Yep, Louis Kerr leading, going into the second lap. Kyle Howarth chasing after him and then a, a, a bigger gap then back to Henry Atkins. But uh, Kerr's got control of this race at the moment. Riding a very good line, going very wide. Uh, Howarth a bit too far back to consider a cutback at the moment but Louis Kerr looking in great form at the front as he crosses for the last lap uh, the conditions have changed so quickly here they're right out by the fence as they come round down the bottom here Ben's one and two it's going to be a comfortable win for Louis Kerr he rode well in this one Kyle Howarth damage limitation there with that second place picking up two points one point to the rider in yellow Henry Atkins and of course no score for Dan Jilks who was excluded so it's a 4-2 once again to the Cheaters. So off the inside in gate one is Scott Nichols in white, gate two in red is Richie Worrell, gate three in yellow is Jordan Jenkins and off the outside is Jake Turner in blue. So here we go with heat number seven we are currently sat at 16 points to 20 in the favour of the Oxford Cheaters. What can this Gladiators pairing do about that in this one? So, tapes up, away they go, and Jake Turner has made a good start off the outside. So too has Richie Worrell off the inside. They go chasing the dirt on the outside, and it is the Gladiators pairing that are one and two at the moment. Jake Turner's under tremendous pressure as they come around that turn, and he's lost that second place. Yeah. Worrell out the front here, Scott Nichols chasing him in second and uh, Turner again doing very well sticking to that inside line he's got Jenkins charging him down at the back here but uh, the four of them pretty well spaced out as he enter the final lap the rain is falling quite heavily here as Richie Worrell goes out towards the fence chasing that dirt he is right up on the fence and he is quick enough to keep Scott Nichols four or five bike, bike lengths behind him it's going to be a win once again for Richie Worrell in red Three points to Richie Worrell, two points to Scotty Nichols in white, one point there to Jake Turner in blue, and no score there for Jordan Jenkins in yellow for the Cheaters. So a good ride there from the rider in red, Richie Worrell. So here we go then with heat eight. We have got gate number one in yellow. We've got uh, Luke Colleen, the young Australian. In gate two in blue, we've got Jake Turner in gate three. In white, we have got Cameron Heaps, and off the outside in red, Dan Jilks. So, Dan off of the outside gate. He'll be one to watch here, I fancy. Jilks in that outside gate. You, you'd fancy the track is just going to start getting a little bit greasy. It's not really, really heavy rain, but it's, it's going to start having a slight impact, you would have thought, so as they go around the bends. So, takes up on heat eight, away they go, and it's even from the middle. Going right out towards that dirt is Cameron Heaps. The two gladiators have nipped up the inside. Heaps is found out on the outside. He's out wide and dry there. He got absolutely hung out to dry out the outside Heaps. He's now cut back up the inside. That's a great ride from Cameron Heaps. Great move by Heaps there up the inside of Dan Jilks. Jilks trying to repay the favour. 
they go into the third bend lot together Jilks has just got his nose in front there but Heaps did really well there got past Jake Turner he's now going for the outside swoop around Jilks Jilks just about hanging on Heaps trying again with that third bend but Jilks just keeping an excellent line and uh, Jilks got his nose in front as he cross into lap four this is a tremendous ride from Dan Jilks, keeping it all tidy on that inside. Cameron Heaps is having to do all the work on the outside. A tremendous race and a brilliant win for Dan Jilks and a 4-2 to the Gladiators. No matter what Cameron Heaps tried, he could not find a way past. A fantastic race here and a win in red for Dan Jilks. Three points to him, two points to the rider in white, Cameron Heaps. One point to the rider in blue, Jake Turner. No score to the rider in yellow, Luke Colleen. A fantastic race. Oh, more fantastic action here at the Coliseum. Dan Jilks would be absolutely delighted with that, and that'll do his confidence to the world of good. Here we go, Heat 9, sponsored by 3-0 Racing. We have got off the inside in white, Louis Kerr. We have got Ben Barker in blue off of gate two. Gate three, we've got Henry Atkins for the Cheetahs. And then for the Gladiators off the outside is Paul Stark in red. Fair play to Mark Phillips and the track staff for getting such a great racing surface. And we're seeing some top class action as well. So here we go with heat number nine. Tapes up, away they go from the outside. Here's the rider in red. And they've gone straight to the fence. All of them have gone straight to the fence and nipping up the inside is Paul Stark. That was a very intelligent ride from the rider in red, Paul Stark. But he has got Louis Kerr now all over the back of him and Louis Kerr goes past. Louis Kerr putting in a hard move there on Paul Stark. A fair move though. And he's uh, got his nose in front. Dived up the inside, almost crossing the white line on the first bend. But uh, he's a hard physical rider, Louis Kerr. And great move there, leading Paul Stark here. Stark's just about a bike length behind and then there's a bigger back gap back to Ben Barker. But uh, Kerr, just about to weigh, stretching his legs a little bit out in front. He is right up on the outside line, Lewis Kerr. He really is chasing the dirt. He looks so wide in both corners, right up on that fence, but there's no answer to him. It is a win for the rider in white, Lewis Kerr. A great win for him and for the Cheetahs. Three points to Lewis Kerr in white, two points to the rider in red, Paul Stark, one point to the rider in blue, Ben Barker, and no score for Henry Atkins in yellow, for the Cheetahs. Coming to the tapes and off the inside here in yellow for the Cheetahs, we've got Jordan Jenkins. We will have the rider in blue, Dan Jilks in gate two for the Gladiators. For the Cheetahs in white, we have got Scott Nichols. And off the outside in red this time for the Gladiators will be Kyle Howarth. So the two captains come into the line this time for both clubs. Of course, these conditions though have thrown a spanner in the works, so anything could happen here. So, tapes up on heat number 10, and from the outside, Scott Nichols and Kyle Howarth. It is Kyle Howarth at lead. Scott Nichols chases after him. Dan Jilks is up the inside. So, it's a 4 2 as it stands at the moment. Kyle Howarth goes very, very wide. Scott Nichols is looking up the inside, but it's Kyle Howarth who leads. Yeah, Howarth has got a good lead over Scott Nichols. The riders are getting wider and wider towards the fence as this uh, meeting goes on this evening. Riders quite well spaced out. Jilks has got a very third firm control of third place. So Jenkins well adrift at the back. He's probably a little bit too far behind Scott Nichols to really challenge him, but Gladiators will be delighted with a 4-2 here if they can hang on to this for the last lap. So Kyle Howarth looking very, very quick in this one. And uh, in, more importantly, Dan Jilks is in that third place. He is doing the job he needs to do with Jordan Jenkins, and it's going to be a 4-2 to the Gladiators. A good ride there from the two Gladiators. Scott Nichols splitting the two of them. So three points to the rider in red, Carl Howarth. Two points to the rider in white, Scott Nichols. One point there to the rider in blue, Dan Jilks. No score for Jordan Jenkins, which means it is a 4-2, and that makes it 29 points to 31. Here we go with the lineup off the inside this time is Richie Worrell in gate one. Gate two in white is Sam Masters for the Cheetahs. Gate three for the Gladiators is Jake Turner in blue. And Cameron Heaps off the outside this time in yellow for the Cheetahs. So Heaps and Masters, the two Australians, versus Richie Worrell and Jake Turner. Getting themselves set at the tapes. Start Marshall just calling them up. Jake Turner's the 
Well, he was the last to come up, but uh, Masters has just rolled back a little bit there. Starting to get a bit impatient, I think. Yep, with the rain still just about falling. We do want to get on with things, as does the start marshal. So here we go with heat number 11. Tapes up, away they go from the inside. Ripsy Worrell makes a tremendous start. Cutting up the inside is Sam Masters. Worrell's gone chasing the dirt, and it is Ripsy Worrell that leads. Cameron Heaps and Sam Masters, though, they pack that second and third place, but he's allowed up the inside. Has gone very close. <laughs> I can't keep up with this, Nigel. Well, we thought it was going to be a cracking race, and it's living up to that fantastic battle out the front between Worrell and Masters. They passed each other. Worrell is just opening up a little bit of a gap now to Masters. Heaps is in third place, Jake Turner at the back. But on that first lap, I thought Worrell was going to end up on the rugby field. He was riding so wide, similar to when he broke the track record here. He looked like he had it all under control, I'll be honest. And he's gone into the fence. He's gone very, very wide. He's almost clashed there with Sam Masters. Richie Worrell, he went straight into the fence. He's thrown away the victory. And it is a win for Sam Masters. Richie Worrell will be pleased to have even stayed on the bike there as he bounced off the air fence. Deary me, Jake Turner came through for the third. Yeah, Worrell, well, as I said, he was going incredibly wide on that bend. That was too wide as far as he was concerned. He got caught up in the uh, air fence there and allowed uh, Masters to nip up the inside of him. So it is Sam Masters who takes the win. Three points to him, two points to Richie Worrell in red, one point to uh, Jake Turner in blue, and no score for Cameron Heaps in yellow. So three all, which means we are now at 31-33 overall. So heat number 12 comes on to the circuit and uh, absolute drama in heat number 11. We look forward to heat 12 and we will have Ben Trigger back on the circuit this time for the Gladiators alongside Paul Stark. And for the Cheetahs, we are expecting to see Scott Nichols and Henry Atkins once again. So, tapes up, away they go, and Scott Nichols makes a flyer off the outside. He came across, but it, the red lights have come on. So, the red lights came on. Scott Nichols did make a quick getaway. Absolutely. So, here we go then with uh, Paul Stark off the inside. Henry Atkins in yellow, Ben Trigger in blue, and Scott Nichols off the outside in white. Second time of asking, heat number 12. So, tapes up once again. Scott Nichols made and picked a perfect start. This time everything is okay, and it's Scott Nichols that leads. He's got Henry Atkins coming up to join him. That's a good ride from Henry Atkins in yellow. He gets himself up on the inside and blocks the run of Paul Stark. Paul Stark's just come back underneath Henry Atkins. That's a great move by Starkey there. Atkins trying to return the compliment down the back straight, but Stark's got a good line heading into that fourth bend, but Atkins is going to be all over the back of him trying to join Scott Nichols at the uh, front of this race. Again, just making up ground down that back straight, but Paul Starks, as I said, riding a good, sensible line through that bend, and uh, Atkins has still got it all to do. Keeping a close eye on this second and third because Henry Atkins does have speed in that third place. He definitely looks quick, but he's not quick enough because it's going to be a win for the rider in white there, Scott Nichols, but crucially, Paul Stark does cling on to that second place in red. So Scott Nichols in white, three points to him, two points to the rider in red, Paul Stark, one point to the rider in yellow, Henry Atkins, no score to Ben Trigger in blue. So it's a 4-2 in favor of the Cheetahs. And I think that ties us all up nicely. So off the inside here in white will be Sam Masters for the Cheetahs. For the Gladiators in red will be Kyle Howarth in gate two. Gate three in yellow will be Louis Kerr. And Richie Worrell will be off the outside in blue. And he is coming onto the circuit as we speak. Very important job here to be done by Richie Worrell though. Yeah, this is gonna be fascinating first bend here. They'll all be chasing the same piece of dirt. So here we go with Heat 13, tapes up, away they go, and Richie Worrell's made a good start off the outside. It is Richie Worrell, but the red lights are on once again. Again, as Richie Worrell this time jumped too soon. So Sam wow. Masters. That's, that's all of the, uh, the Oxford top three now on warning, so that could make Heat 15 interesting. 
pressing the dirt down, trying to give himself a, a firm area to, to take off. He's right out as close to the fence as you can get. So here we go then with heat number 13. So tapes up, away they go. Once again, Richie Worrell's made a good start, but this time Sam Masters has gone there with him and it's Masters who leads. The two gladiators are all over the back of Sam Masters as they head into bends three and four. Sam Masters is gonna have to have his wits about him here. Masters rode a lovely line there, going through bends one and two, with uh, Worrell and Howarth all over the back of him, but Masters just picked the piece of track he wanted to go through and. He's uh, got a bit of a lead here. They've got to watch Louis Kerr at the back. He's trying to come round the outside of Richie Worrell. They could get a 4-2 Oxford and nudge them in front, but as it stands, it'll be a 3-3 and we'll be all tied going to the last two races. Yeah, the two gladiators keeping things even here. The two of them packing that second and third, although the rider in yellow, Louis Kerr, does look quick at the latter stage of this race. Sam Masters looks sensational, though. He takes a win. And Sam Masters picks up that crucial three points for the Oxford Cheetahs. Two points to the rider in red, Kyle Howarth. So 39 all now. Very, very close. We continue with, uh, yeah, our hope of a last heat decider. So interval time here at the Coliseum and uh, riders, a lot of dirt and mud getting scraped off them. But uh, the home team are having a bit of a meeting just to the right of us. Big part to play here for some of those riders in heats 14 and 15. Absolutely tied at the moment. Cameron Heaps, uh, yeah, going all right. I mean, it's a very tight evening. Uh, how are you finding it? Uh, I feel like I've rode really well. Um, that's kind of how I felt all year. I feel like I'm riding well and the points just aren't showing up. I'm just making some silly little mistakes and that's kind of costing me. But overall, I feel like I'm riding okay. So hopefully the points will start coming soon. And um, yeah, it's pretty tight here at the moment. So. Um, hopefully we can keep it tight in this next one and boys can get the job done in 15. Yeah, it's a great meeting so far and we were saying like your average really doesn't reflect your uh, your experience and your ability. So I mean it's, uh, you know, you're probably a bit of a trump card in this Cheetahs team. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, I, I've had a rough couple of, couple of seasons but um, I think kind of getting the best of that now. I think I'm starting to rub my way out of it so um, hopefully, I, yeah, I can start getting the points to f match how I feel like I'm riding and uh, I'll be happy with that. And uh, enjoying pairing up with Sam? Yeah, of course, mate. He's a class rider and, um, you know, we've got some good riders in the team that I wouldn't mind riding with, but if if I had the opportunity to ride with Sam all the time, I would. You know, he's, he's a different class and, yeah, I just enjoy riding with him. Great stuff. Well, Cameron, good luck for it and, uh, yeah, thanks for talking to us. Great stuff. We've got uh, Ben Trigger. Ben, yeah, sorry, you, you walked the wrong way for us then, didn't you? Uh, so, first evening, of course, um, for the championship, I can see you getting a bit frustrated. Yeah, you know, it's uh, y you never want to be scoring zeros, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm trying to stay cool as much as I can, obviously. I know Gary's got to do what he's got to do, so if that means that taking me out of ride, then, you know, I'll, I'm happy just to sit on the sidelines and watch, but... Yeah, you know, the, the weather's been tricky tonight as well and obviously I had such a big gap in between uh, my second race and my last race. So, yeah, you know, just kind of leeching off everyone else, just watching and trying to get settled in for the rest of the season. I think uh, I think everyone's, uh, nobody's disappointed in you, Ben, apart from yourself at the moment. I think everyone's just pleased to have you here. But, uh, you know, everywhere else your form's been great. So, you know, the National Development League, you've been absolutely flying. Yeah, you know, last time I was out, I got a, my first paid maximum in the league. So, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm struggling uh, with form. It's just a case of, you know, these, these guys are a different level of riders and uh, I just need to find my groove and, you know, hopefully make my way up by the end of the season. Absolutely. Well, Ben, we'll let you get on wherever you were walking before we grabbed you. But, uh, yeah, good luck for the, for the rest of the season, really. And uh, obviously, well done for getting around on a sloppy night like tonight. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. We've just got Dan, and obviously Dan, uh, up and down night. Obviously you had that, uh, yeah, we saw how cross you were after the uh, incident. Yeah, it's obviously, um, it's good to end the night, obviously, with a win and, and a third. And the last one, it was, uh, obviously, with the rain, it made, you know, conditions quite tricky for my last two rides. But it seems as though, that, you know, the track's turning over now and it's um, much better. But no, it was hopefully, you know, start the meeting off a bit better, you know, next week. And, um... But no, you know, there's, there's positives, like I said, race win and, and the third and the last win. Obviously, you, you know, you always want to go better, but it's, um, you know, a good start, uh, you know, for my first meeting. From the, uh, from the outside looking in, it looked like conditions changed very quickly. 
Yeah, obviously the rain come down, um, you know, pretty quick. I don't think it was forecast. It was a bit of a surprise to everyone, and um, obviously the the track was, you know, slick already. And obviously then it just become like ice out there, and obviously it's starting to dry out now with the all the rides. But it's, um, yeah, you know, they change. You know, with all road conditions like it before, it's, um, you know, it doesn't you've got to try and make a gate, get out in front, and um, yeah, ride the fastest line. Yeah, great stuff. Well done. We'll let you crack on. Uh, good job so far. Obviously, uh, putting disappointments behind you very, very quickly, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Cheers, mate. So, uh, yeah, how are you getting on this evening? How are you? Uh, obviously, it's quite tricky, but uh, yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, it's okay, man. Um, just this isn't really the bike for here, so we'll just regroup and try again. But I think it's quite a close meeting. Um, I think we're, we level, maybe. I don't know. I guess so. We need something now in the last two big heats, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, when you say it's not the bike for here, what do you mean? Uh, Brian Woodward built this engine for me, um, he's passed away sadly now, um, and we, it was for small tracks, but this is probably just a bit too small and it's got a bit too much power, so it's hard to get the power to the ground, so we'll, um, we'll try something new. I know Jeff Howarth um, gets things going for here and Carl's going well, so maybe we'll give him a go and see what happens. Oh, interesting, that's interesting insight, but uh, obviously, we, I was just saying to Dan, it looked like conditions changed really quickly, but it seemed like it suited you for a minute, you seemed to go quite quickly when it got really sloppy. Yeah, well, you know, when there's a bit of material out there and stuff, it's all right. But the minute that you got the ice, and uh, it's just, just, just really difficult to get around. Then, um, as you saw, Richie come in really hot, and I think he just clipped the air fence. And you know, you can come in with so much speed, but if there's nothing, no material there to hold you up, then you, it's, it's a difficult one. So, but we've made the best of bad conditions at the moment. I would say the bad conditions, just the rain's played its part. So, um, we'll regroup and give it a go. Excellent. Well, good luck for the rest of it, Paul. Thanks, and uh, thanks for talking to us. How's the evening going for you from your perspective? I haven't made a start yet, but that might be down to race fitness and sharpness. So, made some big changes and uh, got in this one and try our best. Starts have been interesting tonight. Obviously, we went for a long time with no warnings, no tape infringements, nothing. And then tonight, we seem to have had four already. That's it, you know, the ref might be holding them a little bit. I'm not really sure, but it's just part and parcel of it, isn't it? You know, you go when the tape's got. Good to be back on a, a competitive meeting, though. Yeah, lovely, you know, it's nice to be back and uh, it's been a long time, you know, so I'm, I'm only, you know, this is my first proper competitive meeting in, I don't know, nine months, so yeah. it's uh, a long wait. Good stuff, well, good luck for the rest of it and uh, we shall see you later on. So we are nearly ready to get going, so I think we will leave it there and we will head back up for heat number 14. So here we go with heat number 14, crucial heat number 14, 39 all at the moment. In this one, we will have off the inside will be Jake Turner here in blue. So this will be interesting to see how Jake goes off of that inside gate. Off of gate two in white for the cheaters, we've got Jordan Jenkins. Gate three in red this time is Ben Barker. And off the outside, we've got Henry Atkins in yellow. Yeah, an interesting one here between some of these riders. Jake Turner has been uh, much improved today. It'll be interesting to see what he does here. So heat 14 is ready. Tapes up, away they go, and Jake Turner's made a good start off the inside. Ben Barker's there with him to support on the outside, but we've once again got red lights on. Once again, a race is stopped, and we've got another tape infringement. Both the gladiators in front there, Nigel, and... Uh, I can only assume it's one of them that's... Too good infringed. to be true. Was that the fifth unsatisfactory fifth start? Jake Turner's been excluded because that's his second tapes infringement. So... That means that Ben Trigger will have to come in in blue. But, uh, well, that's that's pretty devastating for the Gladiators. Either way, it's going to be a last heat decider, but we'd much prefer Turner be setting off level with all the other riders rather than coming back from 15. Yeah, he certainly leapt out of gate one there. It, it didn't look... Uh, it did look like a good gate. Um, but, we, again, we've seen that several times, and uh, we've seen the red lights come on several times as well. We've seen the big hitters... Um, infringing and you know so many of them infringing is very unusual so here we go then the rerun of heat 14 Ben Barker off of gate one in red and uh, off of gate two in white Jordan Jenkins and we've got off of gate three we've got Jake Turner in blue off of that 15 meters and then off the outside in yellow is Henry Atkins what can he do with that extra space that he's got so, tapes up, away they go. Ben Barker's made a good start off of the inside. Henry Atkins is there on his shoulder. And down the back straight is Ben Barker that commands this race. He's got both the cheaters after him. Jake Turner's already making up ground in that fourth place. Yeah, great gate there from Ben Barker. Shooting out in front. 
So Jake Turner putting Henry Atkins under pressure at the back here. It would be massive boost to the Gladiators if Turner can get through and uh, make it a 4-2. But uh, it's not over at the front either. Jordan Jenkins has come underneath Ben Barker. And Barker went too wide on Ben too there. And Jenkins has got the lead. And Jake Turner has fallen at the back. Can he get his bike up? So much drama and the red lights have come on for Jake Turner who's fallen at the back but a fabulous race is stopped there. What a race that was. We had all sorts of action going on with Jordan Jenkins getting the better of Ben Barker and then Ben Barker coming hard up the inside. All sorts going on. Jake Turner had made up all of that ground to get back and past Henry Atkins. But Jake Turner falls and the race is finished. Is it going to be awarded, though? I'm not sure of the rules. In a grass track meeting, of course, here, I, I they would that, award the race. I would think that'll be awarded. It was looking so good for the Gladiators there. Barker out in front, Turner so putting pressure on. Let's just hear what the announcement is. Yes, it's awarded, so that'll be a 4-2 to Oxford. So, a last heat decider here. We have got coming out for the Plymouth Gladiators, Kyle Howarth and Richie Worrell. And for the Cheetahs, we've got Sam Masters and Scott Nichols. So four very capable riders. So once again, lots of prep going on on the outside for Richie Worrell. We are at the tapes for this Heat 15. So away we go. And Richie Worrell hasn't made the best of starts. It's close on the inside. Sam Masters has been stopped. They go roaring around the outside, but it's another Cheetah. It's Scott Nichols that leads, and both the Gladiators find themselves at the back. Yeah, Howarth did the job there of uh, trapping Masters initially, but Scott Nichols just came round the outside, and the Cheetahs are galloping away here to a 5-1 to wrap up Vichy. Richie Woe will keep battling, but uh, he's a little way off. Masters and Nichols out in the front, showing his fantastic experience. But uh, they are top class double at these two and what a pair to have in heat 15. Yeah fantastic pair and Scott Nichols looking absolutely sensational in this one he bolted from the start and really didn't look back and he's going to take the checkered flag here in heat 15. It's going to be a win for Scott Nichols, a 5-1 for the Cheetahs and an away victory in this BSN series for the Oxford Cheetahs. Yeah they'll be delighted with that after those home and away defeats against the Paul Pirates in their opening two matches in this series so that puts the, the Cheetahs right back in it. This was a must win meeting for them tonight if they're going to stand any chance of progressing but uh, Plymouth well there's been some good performances from uh, across the team really tonight they you know they've got got nothing to hold their heads in shame about this is their first meeting as a team Oxford have had uh, a couple of meetings. So Gary May, team manager for the Gladiators, a disappointment for the loss, but plenty of positives to take from tonight. Yeah, you know, it's our first meeting all together. Um, you know, we'll see what happens next week and that, but no, the Oxford are a strong outfit. They've got three big heat leaders that are going to keep them in any meeting, home or away. And we just didn't make the gate on that tonight, but it's only our first meeting. A lot of these boys haven't ridden, a lot of Oxford boys have, you know, they've had matches. And their heat leaders are in the top league as well, so they've been riding. You know, it's only Richie and uh, Carl have been riding, really. You know what I mean? The rest of them haven't really ridden. You know what I mean? So, you know, we're, we'll move on to next week. Yeah, and uh, obviously lots of questions asked about your reserves, but uh, certainly the Kiwi this evening has done, us a bit, done you a bit proud. Yeah, yeah, Jake was uh, struggling last week in the testimonial, but he uh, he came down here Saturday, practised and practised and practised, and, uh, you know, he spent a lot, a lot of money, nearly a £1,000 on equipment this week to get it going, and I'm, I'm quite happy with what he done tonight. The conditions obviously this evening haven't been ideal, it did rain, but the track held up quite well. Yeah, it did, yeah, you know, but the only thing you have to use the outside then, but no, we've done all right, kept the dust down, but no, we, we, we'll move on to next week, see what happens, but, you know, these are like uh, little challenge matches, really, so it's a league one we're after, really. Yeah, how much of this that you're seeing at these meetings, how much is that going to give you an idea of how the league might pan out? Yeah, well, I think this year all teams are strong, you know, and it's, you've got to start winning your own matches and try and get a point away. And that's the plan, really. But, you know, like I said, there's, we've had this one meeting only as a team and then we'll we bounce back, hopefully. Excellent. Well, Gary, shame that you didn't win, but look, plenty of positives and we're looking forward to the season ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. So the Oxford Cheetahs going off on their uh, victory parade. Good performance by uh, Peter Schreck's side. It's uh, obviously their, their big hitters 
leading the way. Top score for them, Scott Nichols with 13 points. He's been banging form this season. Sam Masters just behind him with 12 plus two. Louis Kerr scored eight this evening. Cameron Heap's got five. Henry Atkins, good six-point haul from the reserve berth for the Cheetahs. Jordan Jenkins, three, that, that one race victory in Heat 14 and one point for Luke Colleen. Over to the Gladiators, Kyle Harreth scored 10. It's, uh, Richie Wall, 10 plus one. Ben Barker, seven plus one. Then it was five plus one for Paul Stark. Four points for Dan Jilks, including that race win. It's, uh, Jake Turner, very good five paid six for the Kiwi on his uh, league debut for the Gladiators and Ben Trigger one point from his three rides and of course that included that uh, breaking the tapes in heat one when he had to um, come from 15 metre handicap but congratulations to Cheetahs on a fine away win tonight. 